Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as The Revit Kid. So some of you may have noticed that over the last month or two, I've been reviewing some real-time rendering software, including Lumion and Twinmotion, as well as talking about the pros and cons of them and some of the things I've experienced while using them. Um, I didn't think it would be fair to uh, not also review Enscape. Um, I talked about Enscape. I've been using Enscape 3D for many years. Um, and um, I do use Enscape in parallel with these two, uh, Twinmotion and Lumion. So I thought today what I would do is talk a little bit about how I use Enscape and some of the things I do and don't like about Enscape as well. I'm going to try not to necessarily compare it to a Lumion or Twinmotion, but at the same time sort of talk about uh, the pros and cons that I see while using the software. So before we jump right into it, if you guys have been enjoying these reviews and enjoy my channel, please make sure you subscribe and also hit the notification button below. Um, we're in a very strange time right now at the time I'm recording this. I'm about one week into my own personal quarantine for um, the coronavirus. And I'm sure many of you may be sitting at home working from your home office or maybe your couch and uh, are joining me here on YouTube or on the blog. Um, I want you to subscribe and hit the notifications because um, in the coming weeks, I plan on doing a bunch of live uh, sessions and different cool things to sort of keep us in the groove while we're going through this very strange time in our um, lives, to be honest. So they definitely subscribe and, um, and hit the no notification bell for sure. So let's jump into the review right away. First, what is Enscape? So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Enscape, I'll link it below. Um, but basically, it is a real-time rendering program. The unique piece of Enscape, um, what sort of separates it from the Lumions, the Twin Motions, and the Artlantis, whatever's out there now, is actually, um, it sits on top of Revit or whatever program you're using. Obviously today I'm going to be talking about Revit, um, but it actually sits as an add-in on top of Revit. Um, so what that means is that you're launching it from one, one little play button, and uh, there's an Enscape tab in Revit, and you're launching the software. There is no standalone software to use. So that's a good and a bad thing, and I'm going to talk about that, talk about that in a second. So it's a, a real-time rendering program that sits on top of Revit. And probably one of the coolest things about it is if you know how to make a rendering in Revit, so if you know how to apply materials and lighting and you've made a, a native Revit rendering in the past, then you can use Enscape. And so that's really, really cool. And that brings me to my very first thing that I actually like a lot about Enscape is the fact that it sits on top of Revit. So. As I mentioned before, learning it becomes extremely easy. Um, if you haven't um, made your own custom materials or set materials, or if you if you haven't actually made a rendering in Revit and are wondering how, I've got tons of video and tutorials either on this channel or on my blog. Uh, I'll link them all below, but I've got a lot of information on that, so feel free to check those out. But if you do know how, then it's as simple as literally pressing play. And that's what's really, really cool about it. And not only that, but it's also linked directly to it. So as you move things, it moves around. And so why this is so important to me is um, sort of one of the main ways and one of the, one of the main reasons I use Enscape is actually as a design tool, not necessarily as a presentation tool. And so what I mean by that is as I'm designing a building, um, you know, Re Revit's axonometric views and 3D views and all, you can create a ton of views, but if you've ever designed a project in Revit, you may be like me and have had a thousand 3D cameras placed in your view, in your, in your project. And the reason you're placing those thousands of 3D cameras is because you're saying to yourself, well, I'm sort of designing the space and I'm doing this soffit wall or something and I want to place a camera in that space and see and feel what it looks like. And so you're placing a 3D camera just to quickly snap a shot and then you can see it in that perspective. Um, what's really cool and one of my favorite ways to use Enscape is actually to flip on white mode, which is a specific mode they have, so you don't have to worry about textures. Um, I like to turn a little bit of outlines on. And then you basically have a really, really nice 3D view that's in perspective and to scale that you can have open on it. Let's say you have a separate monitor. You can have it open on a separate monitor, and you can be flying around real quickly and seeing your design as it evolves. So you have your nice 3,000-foot um, axon view in Revit, which is showing your massing of your building, it's how you're working, your plans, everything. But then you can also have this basically rendered view being updated and moving along as you go uh, through your design process. So definitely one of my favorite ways to use Enscape and one of the most common ways that I use it. The second thing that I absolutely love about Enscape is 
whatever they did, however they did it, Enscape does a phenomenal job making interior scenes. What I mean by that is, for some reason, whether it's sunlight only, or whether it's artificial lighting only, or maybe a mixture of both, but either way, the Enscape team did a great job with global illumination and the way it lights the scene um, with very, very little work. You can actually get some awesome, awesome looking interior scenes in Enscape. And so I should be scrolling a couple examples on screen right now. But what I'm telling you is that uh, in, in many programs, and this is the part where I'm going to try not to compare it to others, but when it comes to real time rendering programs, especially, one of the hardest things to do is get extremely good, high quality lighting on interior scenes, and Enscape just kills it at that. So kudos to the team, whatever you guys did, but um, just throwing a view from Revit into, into Enscape, it's amazing how, how high quality the interior scenes can, can become. So the third thing that I'm extremely excited about in Enscape, which is actually something new, so I've been using Enscape since um, beta when it used to crash nonstop. Now it's much more stable, I promise. Um, but uh, I've been using Enscape for a while. One of the things they added recently is a rendered axon view. So in your Enscape screen, in your Enscape view, I should say, um, usually it's just perspective view. So it's a 3D camera perspective um, with the ability to possibly turn on two points so it's nice parallel lines. Um, what they added actually is a axonometric view and a couple options for that. And this is extremely cool. So what, what this looks like to me is actually the way Revit's um, ray tracing view, which also may be realistic too at the same time, but the way the ray tracing view really should work. So if you're trying to make like a 3D plan or even just a, a 3D axon of your massing or something like that, um, this is a sweet view. It's super cool. Um, it's just a new feature that, ju that jumped in, uh, I think in the 2.6 maybe, uh, maybe 2.7, but either way, uh, very recent and it's awesome addition. So the, the fourth reason um, that I really enjoy Enscape is probably the fourth, is probably the second reason why I use it the most. So um, if, if you were to ask me today, um, why are you still using Enscape when you're using Twinmotion or Lumion? And I would tell you two things. First is the integration with Revit, which I mentioned already, and how you, how you can actually um, work um, in that 3D view and it becomes a design tool. Uh, and the second is virtual reality. So I mentioned in my Twinmotion review two weeks ago, now I think it is, um, and in my Lumion reviews in the past that um, VR wasn't quite there for, those, for that software. And I also did a post, I think in 2017, where I ran through a whole bunch of VR software and the reason why I chose Enscape. So I'll link that one below, um, definitely check it out. But today, still the same thing. Two years later, or three years later now, actually, I think that was 2017, um, still the same thing. My number one software for virtual reality is Enscape. And it's really for, for two reasons. The first is it actually looks good. So for anyone out there who has tried virtual reality before or making a scene in it, um, I'm still using HTC Vive. Um, maybe you're using Oculus, doesn't really make a difference. But what you've probably noticed is most of the software where you're taking a building information model, especially from Revit, and you're bringing it into VR, it completely reduces the quality of your scene. Um, it usually reduces the shadows, it reduces the reflections, um, things become flat, they don't look as realistic. And there's a lot of reasons for that. There's hardware reasons, there's software reasons. But either way, um, they're always extremely underwhelming. And so from day one, when I tried Enscape for VR, it has always been one of the best and highest quality looking scenes in VR. And that also um, comes with a pretty good um, performance as well. And so that's the other key is, for example, and again, I don't want to compare too much, but I might as well because I'm on the topic. Um, in Twin Motion, the VR works great. It's 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 um, it's snapped on, and if you if you uh, read my review um, from two weeks ago, I said the same thing. It, it works great. Uh, the functionality is a little limited. You 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 have to use um, teleporting to move around, but I did notice a significant decrease in performance when um, when cranking it up, like to the point where sometimes one eye won't even work. Um, and so that's on the same laptop that I'm running uh, my Enscape stuff on. So same scene, same setup. Um, I actually tested on identical scenes. And um, in order to get Twin Motion to look the quality that I want from Enscape, um, I was actually, uh, the, the performance was, was pretty hindered. So um, again, uh, VR, Enscape is, is, is where I would tell you to go right away, especially if you're a Revit user. So um, we talked about the integration with Revit and how much I enjoy that and how it's become a design tool. Um, the quality of the picture, of the interior scenes and the actual quality of lighting and rendering. 
um, that cool axon view, and then virtual reality. And the last thing that's really cool about Enscape is the price. So Enscape has created a pretty simple payment structure. Uh, you basically have two options. It's either a single standalone license, which means you install it on one machine, and it has to stay on that machine, and that's where you use it. Um, or a floating license, which means you can install it on thousands of machines, but you can only use it uh, concurrently at one time or however many licenses you have. Um, the single license is basically 40 bucks a month, and the floating license is something like 58 bucks a month. That's a pretty good deal, and it's a monthly subscription, which is nice. Um, you could do a, ye a yearly, which gives you a little bit of a discount, but really nice, and for what you get, especially if you're looking to get a quick jump into VR, you've got a VR headset, maybe you're buying one, um, and then you want to jump into Enscape, or you want to jump into your scene, Enscape is the way to go. So, so those are the things that uh, attracted me to Enscape, and those are the things that keep me using Enscape even three years later. So there are a couple things that I'll talk about that kind of, uh, I don't want to say they're cons, because they may not be cons for everyone, but they're things that I don't necessarily like about Enscape. Okay? So the first thing is actually the same as the first thing I like about Enscape, and that is the integration with Revit. So I know, I said, uh, my favorite part of Enscape is the fact that it's integrated with Revit, which is true. But my least favorite part is also the fact that it's integrated with Revit. And if you let me explain a second, um, you're basically living and dying by your Revit model. And so this is a good and bad thing. One of the biggest issues with the full integration with Revit is that you're now limited to the amount of external content that you can bring in. So everyone who's following me right now or re watching this video or watching or reading the blog post, you're probably Revit users and you've probably been using Revit for a while and you have a sense of what it is. And you know that it doesn't always play that nice with bringing in some specific content, especially highly detailed, highly polyed content. So high polygon content. Um, so things like from 3D Max, um, uh, I guess Blender, uh, you, you know, these mo Moto, whatever. Um, it doesn't bring them in, even CAD, right? 3D CAD files aren't necessarily the, the most useful things inside the Revit environment. So you are limited in that sense. Whereas thing, programs like Lumion and Twinmotion, um, yes, they bring in Revit and the workflow is pretty seamless and simple, um, but you can also bring in things from other 3D software, pretty much any 3D software. So a perfect example is um, if I'm doing an operating room mock-up, which is something I've uh, I just recently finished and I'm in, in the process of updating right now. If I wanted to download, let's say there's an anesthesia cart or anesthesiologist cart, whatever, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. And there's a really good piece of content on TurboSquid. Um, and remember, these are high poly contents um, and these aren't necessarily going to be used for construction documents, but they look great in a rendering. And for 40 bucks, right, it's, it's a no-brainer. So that's something where I can download for 40 bucks from TurboSquid throw it into my scene, it's already mapped because it was made in 3D Max and then exported to FBX. I can throw it in Twin Motion or Lumion, and I've got this awesome, awesome, awesome object. It doesn't really happen that way in Revit. So, um, yes, you can find a lot of content, and what you've seen with some of the examples that I've been showing is that you've done a really good job at finding a ton of content as well as building content. Um, but it's it's definitely a limitation, and so just be wary of that. If you're, when, especially when you're creating interior scenes, um, a lot of a lot of the the detail and the feeling of immersion when you're in virtual reality, especially, is in the things like like putting pens on the desk, you know, and putting a pad on the desk, and putting the computer there with a mouse and a keyboard. Um, it seems you know silly, but when you're thinking about creating fully immersive interior scenes, um, those are the details that actually bring the scenes to life. And as you know, um, those families are a lot harder to come about. So either you're creating a bunch of highly detailed content. Or you're trying to find them and so integration with Revit. One reason why I absolutely love the software and one reason why I don't love the software. So what what Enscape did to sort of battle this is they create they've been creating and, and, and developing an asset library. So this is really cool. Um, so they're, they're developing a library of content similar to those in Lumion and Twinmotion where you can place the stuff I was talking about, the entourage type of stuff, um, the people models, the trees, the plants, the cars, uh, the, the TV monitors, you know, wh whatever it is, which is awesome. And so um, I applaud them for that, and I've used it, and it looks great. And so there's, there's, it's a small, it's a small library. There, every every release, they're adding more content, which is great. But this content is being placed into a Revit model now. So that's my second 
second sort of um, what I don't like or, or negative about the software right now is the asset library is great, but you're putting these assets into a Revit model. And so I know all the BIM managers out there are probably cringing a little bit when they think about it um, because this content's kind of weird. Um, what you'll see is it looks like these weird polygon objects. I don't know fully how it affects performance. I've never used it on a large project that became a huge set of construction documents. I've only used it on specific scenes um, and they stayed relatively smaller. Um, and usually what I'll do to control the visibility of it is I'll throw all the uh, Enscape content onto the design option um, and then you know have it off by default. Um, but I'd love to hear maybe comment below how those of you who are using Enscape maybe in, in a firm to create larger projects and then continue on. Are you leaving the content there? Are you making a separate render model? But one of those things, I like the asset library, but I don't necessarily like the fact that you're managing all this additional high poly content within your Revit models, which are to be used for construction purposes. And last but not least, so I only had three things that I don't like, which is kind of cool. Um, last but not least is... Um, this weird error that's been happening over the last few releases and um, I was hoping they would update it and I think I might have mentioned something on the forum but I don't know um, but one of the things is just super strange um, if you're working on one monitor so Enscape works great if you have Enscape open on a second monitor and you have Revit open on one monitor and you're going through but when you open the general settings and the visual settings um, if you click on the settings it actually hides the Enscape scene and it, the Enscape view and it flips it behind Revit which means as you're trying to adjust, say, your contrast or something, you can't physically see the scene while you're doing it, which is a problem. And so this is one of those things where I figured I would just post it here because maybe somebody on the Enscape team will see it, flag it, and then update it for the next one. <laughs> but if you're running into this issue, it's not you. Everyone's running into it. So, in conclusion, I've been using Enscape for three, four years now. Um, it is a part of my workflow. Um, I highly suggest you guys check it out. There's a 14-day free trial, I think. And in those 14 days, you can definitely um, try some stuff out. There's a free student license for you students out there. But I definitely highly suggest you try it out. I, I encourage you to try all three programs that I've been, been reviewing, Lumion, Twin Twinmotion, and Enscape. But definitely try it out. Um, and then if you are planning on using VR, or you're looking at a solution for virtual reality, don't even bother looking at the other stuff. Just, just go to Enscape, I promise. So that's what I got today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you guys are Enscape users or looking into it, definitely comment below or shoot me an email. Let me know what you think. And um, I'll talk to everyone later.